David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you something unique and I feel pretty cool. While it's nice to take a look at pens from larger, more well-known companies, it's also fun to learn about smaller artisans that you might have never been exposed to. And it's one of those smaller artisans that I will be discussing today. The name of the company is called Wet n Wise, and the pen I'll be showing you today is called the Albert. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the Albert, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to Wet n Wise for providing this pen for review. Uh, Wet n Wise is a company based out of Belgium. It is run by a gentleman by the name of Nabi Dastaran. Uh, Nabi is originally from Iran, but now lives in Belgium. Uh, he has a background in practical art as well as being a mechanical engineer. Combine that with his love for fountain pens and that's how he began to create designs and manufacture pens himself. And he named his company Wet and Wise. Uh, Nobby is a big fan of comic books, especially comics originating from Belgium like uh, Tintin and the Smurfs, and another called Kikabee. Uh, there was an edition of that comic called Blonde and Blue, and Nobby liked the alliteration of that title and wanted to name his company something similar. He decided on Wet and Wise. Wet like a fountain pen nib is wet, and wise like an old master writing wisdoms. The pen arrives in this box. Uh, inside we have a couple of things. We have a polishing cloth, which is nice. Uh, we have a couple of cartridges. Uh, and then actually there's a little uh, bag here of some of the shavings from when the pen was created, which is a nice little touch. I like things like that. And then we have the pen. Uh, Nobby likes to give unique names to each of his pens. This pen here is based on the Dalahu model, Dalahu being a mountain in Iran. And this version of that model is called the Albert. Albert being the Nathan Lane character from the movie The Birdcage, who had a line in the film where he wore brightly colored socks for the want of expressing a bit of color. Okay, that was a lot of background information, so let's take a closer look at this unique pen. The Dalahu model is actually available in three different models. There is the GT40 and the Teal Peacock. And then this one here is the aforementioned Albert. Uh, the pen is made from resin, and the distinguishing feature of each of these three models are the bands of color in the material. For this Albert model, the bands are red and white and varying shades of brown with larger gray portions in the material. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it's flat. The cap is clipless and it angles up to about this point where it, then it tapers down slightly. There is a small rounded step down to the barrel which tapers down at an even angle until you get to the end which like the top of the cap is flat. Uh, I also like how both the top of the cap and the bottom of the barrel are cut on the stripe. So you have kind of a variance in colored accents as opposed to having the ends be uh, gray like the larger bands here. Uh, if you've watched any of my reviews, you'll know that I often discuss how I like symmetry and alignment in pens. Uh, in regard to this particular material, at first glance, the banding kind of looks random uh, because there's a lot going on there. But there is some consistency to it. The pattern does repeat itself. But I like that even though it kind of repeats itself, uh, that the, the, the numbers of bands and the variance in colors uh, makes it a little bit hard to tell. So um, even though like this block of bands and this block of bands are exactly the same, uh, the cap and barrel don't come across to me as being too matchy-matchy. The cap twists off in less than one full rotation, and underneath we have a stainless steel number no. 6 Bach nib. And here is the plastic feed. The section is concave. I like the variety of the colored stripes on this section. And then it transitions up to the threads uh, and a medium-sized step up to the barrel. Uh, the pen is fairly light, and I find it to be comfortable in the hand. The section is long enough that it'll accommodate a variety of grip styles, and I don't find the step up to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should happen to rest on it. The cap does post, and it does post securely. Uh, the cap is very light, so I don't find using this pen posted throws off the balance or back weights the pen at all. 
This is a cartridge converter pen. It will accept standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, there are no metal parts to this pen, so with the appropriate amount of silicone grease, uh, you should be able to eyedropper it if you so, so desire. The Wet and Wise Albert is available only through the company's site and sells for $165. And I feel that's a reasonable price for a quality pen from a small artisan shop. Um, it's well constructed, uh, and even though this is not a custom material, it's unique and something I had never seen before. Um, it's definitely one of those eye-catching pens that if I were at my local pen club, folks would be drawn to it uh, and really want to check it out. You know, I kind of miss going to pen club. I mean, who knows how long it's going to be until we meet again, but whenever that will be, I am very much looking forward to it. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Wet and Wise Albert. Uh, on a side note, I have purchased a brand new set of lights, and so I'm experimenting with the best setup for them. So we'll, uh, we'll see how happy I am uh, once I get into uh, editing this video and how it showed on my face and, and my glasses and things like that. So um, if it was a little distracting or they showed in my glasses, we'll work to make that better. I guess we'll find out once I edit this video how, uh, how pleased I am with the new lights. But in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Lamy 2000. Uh, a pen that I just recently reviewed, which is the Kara's uh, Pen Company Ink V2, uh, as well as a Twisby Eco. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star, a Pilot Pereira, and then finally here it is with a Leonardo Fiore Grande. And then in regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Eco and the Lamy 2000 and the Lamy All-Star. Here we go with the writing sample for the Wet and Wise. Albert. This is a medium uh, stainless steel nib uh, and the ink that I'm using here today is an ink that I feel is really um, uh, undervalued and uh, underappreciated which is Cross Violet. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. It's a really nice saturated purple. Uh, and that this is what it looks like in comparison to the Mont Blanc's uh, psychedelic purple, which is a little less saturated, um, as well as Leonardo purple, which I like, but again, is uh, not quite as saturated as the violet. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, it's a really nice bottle with a nice large neck, kind of like the cap on this bottle as well. Um, but yeah, this is an ink that I uh, care for and I think is a little bit underappreciated. And in regard to the rest of the writing sample, A couple of skips there. I do find that this particular nib uh, does run a bit on the dry side. Um, it's something that I might tune a little bit later. Um, originally, I had a different ink in here that was a little bit dry. And so the combination of a dry ink and a somewhat dry nib uh, really wasn't a good combination. So um, I find here that the ink flow on this one is a little bit on the dry side uh, in regard to reverse writing. It's a little intermittent and a somewhat sharp. And then in regard to some fast writing, uh, 
the feed kept up just fine. So here we have the Wet and Wise Albert. I mentioned this at the top of the review, but while it's nice to know a lot about and hear a lot about larger pen manufacturers, I think it's interesting also to find out a lot about smaller artisans like this uh, and the interesting work that they do. And this is definitely one of those pens. Uh, I just really like the material uh, and that it performs nicely as well. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.